This lesson is about B cell activation. We left the last lesson, B cell maturation, with just a little inkling of what happens once activation occurs. We're going to start this lesson with the mature, naive B cell and find out what happens when it identifies an antigen, thinks that it's bad, and asks if it should kill it. Remember, this is happening at the cortex of any of the secondary lymphoid organs so that there's a constant flow of antigens by this B cell. And if it happens to identify one that it thinks is bad, that it thinks it can recognize, it look behind it, ask the T cell if it's okay. The T cell says yes, proliferation, activation. T cell says no, remember it's got that IgD probationary card, it's the ticket to ride, but also you get one mistake. T cell says no, energy. Let's start at that mature but naive B cell. This mature, naive B cell has on it IgM, immunoglobulins, as well as the immunoglobulin IgD. Its surface IgD and surface IgM. And these immunoglobulins act as receptors. The IgM says, I think I have that antigen matched. If it says this is the antigen I think is bad, and the T cell says no, that is there is a failure of the co-stimulatory signal, what happens is that cell undergoes energy. It no longer makes IgM and only makes IgD. IgD does nothing, so it will never proliferate, and it will never attack or defend the system. If this mature, naive B cell says, hey, I have this antigen, I think it's bad, and the T cell agrees, that is, there is a co-stimulatory signal from the T cell, this will lead to activation. Now, activation has two phases. If you think of this from a bacterial infection, it makes intuitive sense. There is an antigen floating around caused by a bacteria. Now, the innate immune system is already trying to fight it with phagocytosis. We're trying to activate the adaptive immune system and get some antibodies to help phagocytosis. As soon as that mature and naive B cell grabs the antigen and the T cell says, yes, that's a bad one, let's kill it, something should happen right away to help the innate immune system fight. That's what wave one is. The very first thing that happens upon activation is IgM secreting plasma cells. Activation means proliferation. The germinal center, the secondary follicle, has an explosion of proliferation. It starts with this one mature, naive B cell and then grows exponentially. Part of that growth will be to generate the already ready IgM plasma cells. These IgM plasma cells will now make immunoglobulins IgM, but they won't be surface bound, they'll be ready for exocytosis. This creates the IgM antibody that we know circulates as a pentamer. We need this immediate response. This is fast, and although it's short-lived, it's specific for the antigen. Now remember, we made randomly this IgM here for this mature naive B cell. We did the VDJ and the VD rearrangements. We just guessed. And now we have an antigen it recognizes. So if we send out IgM, and it's a pentamer form, it's at least going to be able to find that antigen and help out. It's not as fast as innate, and it's certainly more specific, but this IgM plasma cell allows the adaptive immune response to hold over with a weaker affinity, not as good, more general antibody, while the second wave from activation gets ready. Activation also means clonal expansion. 
That means proliferation. And it will proliferate through the principle of affinity maturation because of somatic hypermutation. I'll explain all of these in a minute. And along with that, isotype switching. Scary and daunting, hang on to it. We'll come back to it right after this next set. This means the cells proliferate and they get better at identifying that antigen. With each proliferation, there's a small variation in the antigen binding part of the immunoglobulin, and so that over subsequent proliferations, only the ones with the highest affinity survive, so only the ones with the highest affinity continue to proliferate, and they keep mutating just a very small section of that antigen binding portion until it has a hyper-specific, really high affinity for that antigen only. After all this happens comes wave two. Wave two also has plasma cells. They're IgG plasma cells. Remember, this is a bacterial infection, so IgG is going to be what it is. These cells also make immunoglobulin and secrete it as antibody. This, from the process of infection to the mature naive B cell identifying the antigen, to the activation of these IgG plasma cells takes time. IgM happens first as the bridge between an immune system and the really good snipers trained specifically against that antigen. This process upon initial exposure is slow and is also short-lived. But it is hyper-specific, and it's IgG. At the same time, these plasma cells don't need to be along very around for long. They need to be around only until the infection is cleared. The same clones, the same cell lines that differentiate it into plasma cells can also differentiate into a smaller subset, a very small population of memory cells. Now, memory cells can be considered IgG because the immunoglobulin they have is the same as the immunoglobulin that's released by these plasma cells as an antibody, only it's going to be on their cell surface. And this cell acts as a surveillance cell just like the mature naive B cell did. Only now there's no IgD, there's no way to make them energic. And these immunoglobulins have the same hyper specificity, the same high affinity that these antibodies do. So the next time that that antigen is encountered, you don't have to go through the process of activation, IgM and then IgG. In fact, the next exposure is hyperacute and severely specific. This is why you vaccinate. The first time your body experiences the vaccine, what you're going to get is the IgM, then the IgG, and the memory cells. So that when the infection that you vaccinate against is seen again, you start with the IgG memory cells and automatically get the plasma cells with a high affinity and high production. It's also why you have anaphylaxis on the second exposure. If you're allergic to penicillins, you get a little rash. You get a little rash because all you did was IgM and then you made memory cells for IgE. The next time you're exposed to that penicillin, you've got the IgE memory cells, so there's a ton of it, and all of a sudden, anaphylaxis. Very rarely do you have anaphylaxis on the first exposure because you need to prime your immune system. Okay, this makes sense. An immune system, then IgM on first exposure. After some time, IgG clears the infection, memory cells, hold the memory, so if it's re-exposed right to the IgG, you can skip the IgM part. Great. What are all these things? What do they mean? Well, it really comes down to two things. It's affinity maturation and isotype switching. Start with affinity maturation. What we're talking about is the antigen binding portion of the immunoglobulin, the variable domains and in particular, the areas that were hyper-variable. Now remember, we just made random guesses with the variable regions, VD and VDJ rearrangement. Now what we're saying... <laughs>